The American dream, Dusty Rhodes, has passed away. Very sad day for wrestling today, especially for me. I go way back with Dusty Rhodes as far as my memories of him goes. Uh, I found out very late in the afternoon today, most of you had already known this by the time it got to me. My Facebook and Twitter was flooded with a lot of you guys letting me know the news, but I actually didn't see it until hours later. I did say a few things on both social media sites, Facebook and Twitter. My links to those are in the description below if you want to read what I had to say about that earlier today. And specifically in my Facebook post, I mentioned that I would not be talking about the passing of Dusty Rhodes until I came up here this Sunday night and did a Money in the Bank reaction video. However, I lied. After thinking about it all day, Dusty Rhodes to me was just a little bit too significant for me just to briefly touch on his passing in some random video. He deserves his own video. And you guys know me and my thoughts on deceased wrestlers. About two and a half, three years ago now, I made that big deceased wrestlers commentary, and there's about 25 new names that we would have to add to that if I were to do it again. This sounds more like something that was out of his control. From what I understand, the only thing I know about Dusty Rhodes' death is that he did suffer a fall yesterday or the day before, and when he got to the hospital, he had all sorts of complications, apparently, and died early this morning. The outpouring of love and support for him and his family seems overwhelming on social media, which, again, is one of the reasons why I decided that I'm going to come up here and make a video specifically devoted to his life and career. This is not going to be a long video. I just figured I need to come up and say a few things. A lot of deaths in wrestling hit us hard individually depending on what kind of wrestling fan you are how long you've been watching wrestling and any sort of personal or significant bond you had with the person that passed away i've had a lot of deaths that hit me very very hard a lot harder than other ones have for example someone like owen hart a lot of you know my love and respect for the hart family especially bret hart and basically that whole clan up there calgary was my favorite area of professional wrestling you know as far as the territories go macho man randy savage was another one because he was just such a huge giant chunk of my young life Life. And to see that die, it really does hit you hard. And with Dusty Rhodes, for me, I credit Dusty Rhodes with my very first ever memory of professional wrestling. The very first conscious memory that I have of pro wrestling. And I've told this story before in one of my Q&As. As a matter of fact, if you look at the screen, I will put the link to that Q&A on the screen. And if you click it, it will take you directly to the part of the video in which I talk about this. So if you want to hear what I had to say about these matches a couple of years ago, just click the link it'll take you right over to that but my very first memory of wrestling was looking at pictures in a magazine of the series of matches that Dusty Rhodes had with superstar Billy Graham for the WWF title in Madison Square Garden in the 1970s. Rhodes was working Florida at the time and Eddie Graham and Vince McMahon worked out a deal to send him up north and work a program with superstar Billy Graham and it was an amazing set of matches. They had a great feud and it actually took me many years before I actually saw those matches on tape but the pictures in the magazines alone are tattooed on my brain. I will never forget the significance of that feud and me laying eyes on those pictures and from that day on wrestling was a part of my life. Dusty Rhodes' reach in professional wrestling extended very, very far. I mean, this guy was a multi-time world champion, U.S. champion, plus he held countless amount of titles on the regional level, whether he was in Texas, whether he was in Florida. He had great success in the NWA. He had great success in the AWA, tag-teaming with Dirty Dick Murdoch, the Texas Outlaws, one of my favorite old-school tag teams of all time. The legendary feuds and matches he had with guys like Ric Flair and Harley Race and, and Tully Blanchard, you name it, he had so many great moments moments in wrestling and achieved so much and then went on to be a booker a trainer, a mentor to so many people, including all of the young men and women that are currently in NXT right now. And even though he left us way too soon, I'm really thankful that those some of those young kids in WWE's developmental system were able to benefit from the knowledge and experience that a guy like Dusty Rhodes can give. Like I said, it's just an extremely sad day. The Rhodes family is amazing. Dustin, I've always thought, was a supreme talent. Same goes for Cody 
Rhodes. I've always said since Cody came into the company that he should at least be given opportunities or be in world title programs because I do believe he is that good. Not to mention his legacy and his family name ain't too shabby either. So I was always really hopeful that Cody Rhodes would achieve great heights in the WWE. Maybe he will now. I don't know what the future will hold for the Stardust character. I don't know what the WWE is going to do as far as the Money in the Bank pay-per-view this Sunday or Monday Night Raw, any sort of tribute that they might do for Dusty. I'm sure they will do something. I don't know if maybe Cody Rhodes will abandon the Stardust gimmick, maybe just for a little while. Maybe him and Dustin can reunite as a tag team just under their names, Cody and Dustin Rhodes, and maybe have one more nostalgic run with the tag team titles, maybe a short one just to tribute to their father. So it remains to be seen still how the WWE handles this on TV. I'm sure they will be nothing but classy about the whole situation. Dusty Rhodes was so widely loved by a lot of people in that company right now because he worked as a trainer down in NXT. The love that I've seen so far today just really seems overwhelming. And I, uh, my thoughts go out to Cody and Dustin and the entire uh, Rhodes family, his wife, everybody. I don't think I was ready to lose somebody as big as Dusty Rhodes because of what he meant to me. You know, we everybody affects us different ways. You know, some of you were very, very affected deeply by Eddie Guerrero's death and some others. You know, Dusty is one of those that hits me like that because I have so many great memories of him. I watched everything. I watched AWA growing up. I watched NWA. I watched WWF. And seeing Dusty Rhodes on television in some form of capacity for about 30 years was pretty memorable for someone like me. And I just can't say enough good things about him. Very underrated as a booker as well. Uh, Dusty Rhodes has his critics. We've all kind of joked about Dusty Rhodes finishes and things like that. And yes, he could be that way. But at the end of the day, he had an unbelievable amount of creativity. And it was creativity that stayed within the confines of professional wrestling because the guy had such a history in wrestling and had been down the road and done so much as a professional wrestler for him to take over in a booking and writing and storyline capacity. You know, to me, I always supported Dusty Rhodes and his decisions. It wasn't like a Vince Russo who had all these wacky ideas but never stepped one foot in the ring. Dusty Rhodes, yes, he had some crazy ideas from time to time, but this is coming from somebody that's actually been in the wrestling business and he thought that it would work and a lot of his stuff did. Shockmaster and Robocop excluded, of course, but I've always been a fan uh, of Dusty Rhodes' creativity and I think he deserves a lot more credit than he gets for what he's able to accomplish, you know, in a behind-the-scenes capacity. He came back to the WWE around, what, 2005 or so? He had worked for TNA, kind of in the same role behind the scenes, and then came into WWE and now has been working in NXT, you know, as a trainer and a mentor to so many young talents that will fill this business for the next 20 or 30 years, you know, are all going to have a little bit of knowledge that they were able to get from Dusty Rhodes. And I wish he was still with us. It's a shame. Like I said, I don't know too many specific details about his death. I don't know if this was something that was avoidable or if maybe he could have lived if things would have happened differently. I don't know. Dusty Rhodes was definitely getting up there in age, you know, pushing 70, but I still kind of thought we had a good 10 years of Dusty Rhodes left. The man was never in the greatest of shape. He was always a bigger guy, definitely not a body guy. So from a health standpoint, he probably wasn't going to live to be 100 or anything like that. But this sounds like a horrible accident that caused some complications for him. I hate that, you know, his death was triggered uh, by a simple fall in his house. So it's a real shame. And it came as a shock to all of us. I was floored when I saw the news, you know, just kind of peeking at Twitter or Facebook for the first time. And then that's all you see is dusty, 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 dusty. And I'm like, oh, shit. Just goes to show you, you got to check that wrestling news every single day because you never know when somebody's going to die. Personal memories of Dusty, we all have a lot of the same ones. The guy was unbelievably charismatic. I think Dusty Rhodes invented charisma. I think Dusty Rhodes had charisma before charisma was cool. A lot of guys before him, the gorgeous Georges, the Buddy Rogers, guys like that, had a fair amount of charisma, but nobody had ever seen anything like Dusty Rhodes. He was amazing on the mic, very believable on the mic, and also very amazing and very believable inside the ring as well. For a guy that looked like he did, and to not be really in the greatest of shape, he could go out there and wrestle an hour like it was nothing. I love old school wrestling so much, and going back and watching old footage of Dusty from the 70s and 80s, I will never get tired of doing that. I have VHS tapes that are literally onion skin thin because I have worn them out watching so much of his shit. Thank God we have the technology now where you can put this shit on DVDs and upload it to hard drives and stuff. Otherwise, I would have completely worn these tapes out. I remember specifically around 1998 or 1999, I actually uh, tape traded uh, for like a 12-hour Best of Dusty Rhodes video. That's kind of how you had to do things back then. It just had all of his promos and all of his great matches and title victories and everything on there. And I just remember watching that over and over so many times years ago and how awesome I always thought Dusty Rhodes was. I have tons of memories of this guy. Most of the stuff 
that I remember about Dusty the most fondly came from his NWA days. I loved it when he was world champion, feuding with Harley Race and Ric Flair and guys like that. I loved going back and watching old tag team matches of him and Dick Murdoch. And when he got to the WWE, of course, it was the polka dots. It was the common man. It was kind of that goofy-ass character or whatever. Not my favorite uh, of Dusty Rhodes' gimmicks, but still memorable because he did a lot in the WWE in the short time he was there. And I even remember right before he left, I actually thought he was going to start turning into the NWA Dusty Rhodes. I remember the, uh, what was it? They did the thing with Sapphire. That was his uh, little manager. And I believe it was a SummerSlam that year. been 1990 and he worked macho man and the big angle was that sapphire was getting all these presents and shit weeks and weeks and weeks on tv leading up to the big pay-per-view and they were going to announce who her secret admirer was at SummerSlam. well dusty Rhodes can't find her all day long he has to go out to the ring by himself to face macho man and that's when ted dibiase comes up on the stage and announces that he was the one that basically purchased sapphire his manager turns on him aligns herself with ted dibiase and i remember the backstage promo that he gave after his loss to Macho Man at SummerSlam to me was the closest thing to a real Dusty Rhodes promo that we ever got in the WWE. And I almost thought that was WWE's way of shedding that stupid gimmick and Dusty Rhodes was going to become more of the Dusty Rhodes that we all knew and loved. And when I went back and watched that promo, he was, for once, he was mad. He wasn't a funny character laughing and smiling and dancing. He was legitimately pissed off. And you could tell. And right after that, he stopped wearing the polka dots. He changed his outfit up a little bit. They brought in Dustin Rhodes for a short time, and he feuded with his son Dustin against Ted DiBiase and Virgil, which is also where uh, Virgil's babyface turn was born. So it's a shame that Dusty didn't stick around any longer than that. Right after that Royal Rumble, I believe, 91 match with Dustin and Dusty versus Million Dollar Man and Virgil, I don't remember seeing Dusty Rhodes in the WWF again. He headed back down south to uh, Atlanta. But that was always one of my biggest regrets about Dusty Rhodes. A lot of people say it was a rib, you know, Vince McMahon, you know, working against Dusty Rhodes and WCW and NWA for so long when he brought Dusty in, he wasn't going to make him, you know, one of his top stars. And he definitely wasn't going to make him a booker or anything like that. And they just gave Dusty Rhodes a silly gimmick. And a lot of people say uh, that it was a rib. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. To me, that's not what this commentary is about. It really doesn't matter. All that matters is that we all remember and we all acknowledge the contributions that Dusty Rhodes made to this business. And let me tell you, he made a shit ton of them. A lot of my audience uh, is extremely young. A lot of you are Attitude Era born wrestling fans who honestly by that point Dusty Rhodes was retired. Other than the occasional special appearance match or something like that, you guys didn't really see a whole lot of Dusty Rhodes. But luckily in today's information age that shits all over the internet, I cannot express enough how important I think it would be to maybe go back and watch some of his promos, watch some of his matches. As a matter of fact, years ago the DVD uh, that WWE released on him, I put a picture of that uh, DVD up on Twitter today actually, Uh, Uh, But the DVD set that they did on him, I don't know, 07 or 08, maybe even before that, was wonderfully done. It was one of my favorite, and again, another underrated DVD. The Dusty Rhodes DVD and the AWA DVD, I always thought, were two of my favorites that really don't get, you know, the recognition I don't think that they deserve. But if you can get your hands on that Dusty Rhodes DVD, or at least the biography, and again, I'm sure it's probably on the WWE Network as well. I could sit here and talk about my memories of Dusty Rhodes literally for two hours. Unfortunately, I wanted this to be a quick tribute video. I don't have a whole lot of time tonight, but I wanted to make time. I wanted to make time for Dusty because it's the least that I could do for him. The way he touched me as a wrestling fan and how significant he was to me as far as my memories in wrestling go, the least I can do is come up here and talk about the man for 10 or 15 minutes because he was absolutely amazing. Dustin and Cody, the two of you and your whole family for that matter are in my thoughts. I'm sure everyone else is keeping you in their thoughts as well. You have a colossal wrestling community that love and respected your father and we all love and respect the two of you as well. The Rhodes family most certainly certainly has left a permanent mark on the pro wrestling business and the guy that started it all was Big Dust. So with that being said, scroll below into the comments section. Leave me your favorite Dusty Rhodes memories if you have any. What was your favorite match of his? What was your favorite promo of his? You want to throw a link down there? Go ahead. And for those of you out there that are very, very, very young, like I said, that might not have any memories of Dusty Rhodes, make some memories. Look him up. Do some research on the man. Watch what wrestling used to be like. Watch how good he was on the mic and how charismatic. There was no one like him. So from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you to Dusty Rhodes for the endless memories that he has given me as a wrestling fan. And if you gave other fans out there even a fraction of the memories that you gave me, they are extremely, extremely lucky. Dusty Rhodes, we all love you. We will all miss you. Rest well, brother.
I will catch you guys in three days after the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. I will be coming up after the show and doing a reaction vid, so keep a lookout for that. In the meantime, long live Dusty Rhodes. Peace.